I have never seen such a horny woman twisting and turning her body, trying to get the attention of the strong man across the street. His eight-pack abs make women want but not get. Anna returned to her house in despair. She saw her cousin, whom she had grown up with. She had a sudden urge to ask him to kiss her. He thought it was a love kiss between relatives, a light kiss on the cheek. The girl Anna did not feel love. At that moment her aunt came out. Anna's father had come back impromptu. She rushed to get it and read it, but instead she saw the news of her father's death. The atmosphere instantly dropped to a freezing point. She didn't know what she should do. Her aunt said that there might be a pension. After saying that, she took her son and went into the house, leaving Anna alone with her grief. But a bigger crisis came. That day, her aunt said she would take her to a wedding. After that the family moved into town. Anna happily asked who was getting married. Aunt replied that it was her and her cousin's wedding. It turned out that in order to swallow Anna's pension, so she asked her son to marry Anna. Looking at her balding cousin, Anna's smile froze. She imagined her future marriage partner, but not a weak cousin. But she had lost her family, away from her aunt's family. She didn't know how to survive. Soon after she followed them into the city, with a wedding ring on her hand. The noise of the streets made Anna a little uneasy. Arriving at the rented store, the darkness of the room made Anna's heart a little rotten. It was not at all what she had imagined. She sat on the corner with a view of the street, staring out the window. And so she stayed, and her husband was working in the office. His frail body did not allow him to do too much physical work. And every night, as a couple, also made Anna feel sad. For the rest of her life, Anna was like a statue, sitting at home in silence, until the day her husband brought home a friend. Berg, her mother-in-law, and he were talking happily. Anna stood by awkwardly. Berg soon became friendly with them. Anna was still sitting next to him, but her eyes were always on Berg. Anna was touched by his humor, but she couldn't show it. She just leaned against the window and breathed heavily. And this day, when Berg drew the portrait of her husband, she couldn't help but peek at him. And Berg complimented Anna in a subtle way. After her husband left. They are the only ones left in the room. Woman's expression is sometimes soothing, sometimes frowning, and the skirt keeps shaking underneath. It's hard to imagine. Her little lover is hiding under the hem of her skirt. The two had already had a secret love affair. Berger was a friend of her husband's. He kept his aggressive gaze on her. And then came to her. Love came. It brightened up the gray cottage. Anna changed her gloomy appearance. She became lively. And she began to meet Berg in private. But because of her mother-in-law's presence, they did not dare to openly. And her husband and Berg were in the same studio. He didn't notice anything was wrong. Even at lunchtime, they still see each other. When they met every Thursday, Anna started attending them together. She and Berg had a fling. But this life also made Anna a little uneasy. She didn't want to be a woman who was out of the house, but looking at her weak husband, she did not regret her decision. These days, the family did not notice anything unusual about the two of them. However, one night, her husband suddenly asked to move back to the countryside. This meant that she would never see Berg again. Anna suddenly panicked. She said she liked it here. She didn't want to go back. Her sudden rebellion made her husband sense that something was wrong. At night, she sneaks out to see Berg while her mother-in-law and husband are asleep. She sneaked out to see Berg and told him about it. Berg said that you were mine. This statement made Anna's heart flutter. She resisted the marriage even more. She grew to hate her husband when he tried to impress her, to send her a bouquet of flowers. But Anna just turned her head in silence. She took it without expression. Her husband had never cared for her. This sudden change was just a drop in the bucket. That day, the three of them went to the park together. The world of birds and flowers relaxed them all. However, the frail husband got tired before he could walk a few steps. They could only rest where they were. And the husband gloated. Lying on Anna's lap, he said she was his portable pillow. This image did not sit well with Berg. The husband soon fell asleep, and he sat next to Anna. He looked at the sleeping man, then put his hand on Anna. Anne's hand went to the hem of his friend's white skirt. The woman's expression changes instantly. The man thought she was enjoying it very much, but he didn't expect. Not far away came their friend. Berger instantly stood up. The friends looked at Anna's sleeping husband. The voices were also much quieter. It's a good thing the friends didn't stay long. But after they left, Berg offered to go boating. The husband faltered and got into the boat. Berg held out his hand to Anna. Then he gave her a wink. Anna instantly understood that he wanted to kill her husband. Anna hesitated for a few seconds and also got into the boat. After all, it was Berg she loved. Berg sailed the boat gradually to the deserted place. And soon after, family and friends came to the ferry. Anna and Berg were rescued from the water. 
Apparently, the husband had died in the water. On the way back, Bird kept clarifying that her husband was dancing in the boat. Anna didn't deny it, but she was distraught for the rest of the day. The funeral took place shortly afterwards, out of sight, out of mind. The two still secretly met in private, but outwardly she pretended to be sad and always cared for her mother-in-law. Her friends also advised her not to be too sad. She should think about Anna's future. She couldn't stay a widow forever, and because of the guilt she felt, she had trouble living day and night. She even had nightmares at night. Such anxiety made her more and more dependent on Berg. Even proposed to elope this way, but Berg refused because he always wanted all the property in his mother-in-law's name. So he made Anna pretend to be sad, to gain the sympathy of her mother-in-law. And the ploy really worked. Anna was like a hollow doll. Her friends couldn't stand to see her. It had been eight months since her husband's death. When they saw the kitchen, Berg and Anna were a perfect match. They persuaded their mother-in-law to accept Berg, then to let Anna marry a stranger. Maybe Berg was the best choice, so they married with the acquiescence of their families, and their mother-in-law gave them all the money. They were happy on their wedding night, but the death of her husband was a thorn in their side. No matter what, they could only live like this. However, one day their mother-in-law suddenly had a stroke. They had to take on the responsibility of taking care of her. But Berg wanted to kill her mother-in-law more than once. But when he thought about signing the inheritance, he refused to do so, and the guilt lingered in Anna's mind. The day she let it slip, she told the truth about her husband's death. Her mother-in-law heard these words, but she couldn't speak. She couldn't tell her friends about it, and they always played the role of filial son. The friends didn't suspect them either, until the day the mother-in-law broke the ink, wrote down the words of help, and Anna, to escape the guilt of her husband's death, she began to drink heavily. Berger also spent the day in a daze. That day he went to buy poison. When his friends came to the store and saw the truth written by his mother-in-law, then they knew everything. When Berger found out about it, he took Anna and his mother-in-law to the river. Berg took out the poison. Anna took out the dagger. At that moment, the two of them had the same idea. Instead of living with self-condemnation all day long, they should just kill themselves. Granny saw the death of both of them. Her heart was also very sad. 